Today, I'm going to cover what's the process of creating content for social from start to finish. There's short form content, long form, emails, newsletters, ads, podcasts, and then of course, repurposing across different platforms and channels. What kind of equipment do we actually use? And does equipment even matter? What software is essential? What would I do if I were just making content myself? And then finally, how do people make money from the content specifically in the fitness industry? Once upon a time, I was a one-man media show. That's right, I had a phone, a tripod, and iMovie to edit and then post videos to Instagram. I'm fortunate to have slowly and steadily built a team around me that allows us to make higher quality content with greater speed so we can continue to break through this competitive landscape and hopefully share valuable and entertaining content with you. So meet the team. First, there's Satya. Satya is our chief marketing officer at Functional Bodybuilding. She's highly involved in every step of the content creation process. Then there's Nate. Nate is our media producer and he handles everything media related from capturing content to actually editing and then making sure it lands on social media. Let's dive into our process from idea to social media post. Now, by the time we walk into a filming session, which we have several throughout the week here at Functional Bodybuilding, we already have a list of post concepts ready to go. Coming up with these is the role of a creative strategist, whether that's you or someone on your team. In our case, Satya Khan, our chief marketing officer, starts a list of ideas. Some of these are iterations on content that has done well for us already. Something like a light barbell challenge or content that has done well for other fitness accounts who are more broadly on social media. Others are brand new ideas that we wanna try based on questions that we're getting in our comments or from our athletes or new types of videos that we wanna experiment with. It's a mix of analytics and creativity and it's always evolving. One way to do this is save every post that gets you to stop in your tracks on social Social media or that you like leave a comment on or share then go back and ask yourself why was that what made me stop it could be the topic or the way it was presented or something that made you laugh analyzing these things gives you a feel of what grabs and holds attention after the video topics or themes are established Satya and I will go back and forth in a notion document notion is a software platform that we use to organize all of the media creation that we're doing I might add in movements that I want to show or points that I want to make and she'll envision how it comes together in a post. Sometimes there's a tightly edited script or a shot list and sometimes we just keep it more free form and ad lib as we go. We usually film for a couple hours after a training session so that I'm warmed up and energized for the day. Plus, it feels good to have a little bit of a pump when I'm on camera doing exercise related content. Now, Nate, our media producer, as I mentioned, he does most of our videography. From time to time, I will film a few additional things on a tripod during my own training session or when I'm at home, and that gets used for B-roll or clips for Instagram stories. Now for equipment, we have a few camera bodies like the A7S III and a few prime lenses that we swap in and out. For sound, we use the Rode shotgun mic or the DJI wireless microphone. We also have a couple LED light panels with soft boxes for lighting options and variety. Additionally, we have a bit of a studio set up so that I can actually read some of these scripts off of a teleprompter, and that way I'm not fumbling over my language and I can get my point across to you when we have scripted content like this. Our setup has evolved over the years, but this whole process started with me filming my own training on an iPhone in what looked like a Costco warehouse. And sometimes iPhone footage performs even better because it feels more authentic. So don't get too hung up on equipment if it's out of your budget. Once we start filming, this is where some improvisation happens. The first couple seconds of a video are extremely important in capturing attention. Hip openers for the gym and rock climbing too. What you say, how it looks, what will make someone stop scrolling long enough to hear your message. It could be silly, or surprising or state someone's problem the exact way that they would say it to another person. We want to introduce concepts in a way that will click. So we experiment a lot with different takes and a variety of shots to capture and hold attention. Now, after we film, I might record some extra voiceovers. Then Nate, his video editors take over from there, working from the notes that we have in Notion to create the full 
content piece. We use professional editing software like Adobe Premiere and have also experimented with newer AI tools for adding captions, but you can easily use CapCut or iMovie and still make some decent edits if that's all you have. After editing, we'll all review the videos one final time to see if any tweaks are needed. And then we add subtitles, captions, and some finishing touches and schedule them for posting. We also have a couple members on our team that help push these videos out on different social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts at different times of the day. So we use software like Planoly to manage it all. But we started out just by posting everything by hand. So that's totally an option if you're still just building some momentum. How does content actually make money or relate to business? It's a great question and it depends on your approach. If you're an influencer, most people that hold the title influencer have companies paying them for certain amounts of posts featuring their products, especially if your content performs well. We do a small amount of this ourselves, but only for brands that I'm naturally aligned with, and it's not our main revenue channel. Keep in mind, you'll need to be organized about meeting obligations and sharing post metrics regularly. You have deliverables to these brands and it's your job to meet them and not put it on them to constantly hound you for when you're gonna be posting your content. Now, if you're a service-based business or professional, your content could attract leads who message you for follow-up or your main call to action could direct them to an inquiry form on your website. Our approach is to provide as much value as we can for free so that people will take the next step with us. Maybe they'll sign up for our email newsletter, which we regularly link to from social media so that they can learn more about our training in the articles that we share over there. Maybe they'll check out our website or even sign up for our Persist training program. That's ideal, but even if people just like, share, and engage with our content, that helps our brand grow. You do need a monetization strategy if you wanna do this professionally, but we've always focused on how we can add value first and then develop a relationship from there. Now, one more thing about making content. Be prepared for most of it to flop. Nobody goes viral every time they post. That's unrealistic. Some of your content may be widely shared and some will help just a few people while others will get nothing but crickets. Either way, you'll learn. So keep posting and keep noticing what works a little bit better and do more of that. I promise you'll amaze yourself even in a few months with what you can create so long as you stay consistent. What amazes me is as I think back on our history of creating content over the past 10 years, that there has been such an evolution. We have gone to great lengths to create shock and awe with some ad campaigns and some content creation strategies. We've done everything from lighting smoke bombs on a pier out in Oakland to having chalk fights in the gym with neon lights behind me. We even did a video shoot on an old camera that actually rolled film to make it look like I was doing a pump workout back in the 80s. But what strikes me the most is the evolution of our consistent content. You can look at six month periods or even year long periods and you can see how our content has changed. If you're following the steps in this video and you're analyzing how your content is performing, looking at analytics and seeing how your audience is actually engaging, you will learn what works best and what doesn't. And that should inspire you to change evolve and get better. I'd love to follow up with you and answer any questions that you have about content creation in general or our specific process with functional bodybuilding and my brand. Drop them below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for future content. We'll see you next time.